my name is Hadley Moore and I'm going to read a portion of my story when my father was in prison, which appears in Madville Publishing's anthology, Taboos and Transgressions, Stories of Wrongdoings. When my father was in prison. We had this bird called Smokey that my brother taught to say nevermore, but he, Smokey, couldn't ever really do it since he was the wrong kind of bird. Not a talker, my mother said. There was a girl across the street whose father was a government functionary. My brother made me repeat the words to get the sounds right. And when I asked what, he, what that was, he said it was almost the same thing as being in prison, except her father slept at home. Two church ladies came to bring us Christmas presents. The presents were SpongeBob SquarePants pillowcases and the cards were in my father's handwriting. How did they do that? But you could tell the gifts weren't really from him, my brother said, because in spite of everything, he wasn't that stupid. All my brother felt about him anymore, he said, was the lack of him. And that made my mother look up from her cutting board and say, you're getting a little too big for your britches, aren't you? And my brother said it was true. None of his pants fit. Other kids had fathers with jobs who could buy their kids new clothes, even the girl across the street's father and you know what he was. I heard my mother on the phone saying, I think the boys will kill me. That's what I really can't stand, not the... And then she walked away with the phone and I didn't know what wouldn't kill her, but I knew my brother and I might. I opened my brother's door without knocking and his friend Carl was kneeling on the floor and my brother was sitting on the bed. I shut the door right away and blinked and blinked but I could still see them without their pants on and my brother's hand in Carl's red hair and Carl's face somewhere in there with the blankets and my brother's legs. My brother told me later it was just something you did when you were 15, but he wouldn't look at me for three days and I wanted, but also didn't want, to ask him where were their pants? What had happened to Carl's face? I counted the years from nine to 15, even though I knew how many it was, in six seemed like a lot, but also not enough. Smokey died and we put him in a cereal box, which seemed like the wrong kind of box because even though he went right in, there was a lot of space left. So my brother stuffed in the SpongeBob pillowcases and closed the box and then wrapped it in flower paper like it was a present, which actually it, the pillowcases, had been in the first place. Ashes to ashes, my brother said circle of life. We went outside to bury the present under the pine tree in the backyard, but we had to wait until almost dark because this was a rented house. The landlady might not want us digging holes, my mother said. Nevermore, my brother said. My mother took me to a church that had something called prison ministry, but my brother wouldn't come and the church was just regular anyway. No one said anything about prison or asked us about my father. When we got back, my brother and Carl were sitting on the couch watching SpongeBob. My brother had a pillow on his lap and was holding the remote and Carl's face was red like his hair. I'd heard a new word at school, so I tried it. Hey, dick sucks, I said, and my mother swatted my butt and my brother said, idiot, and Carl just got redder and stared at the TV and blinked and blinked, like how I blinked after I shut the door on them. He, my father sent us letters. Hey fellas, how's my boys? Your pops is okay. We got to watch a movie the other day. The Great Escape. Haha, ha, just kidding. Actually, it was a movie about penguins. You know, I'm helping out in the kitchen here. It's not too bad for a job. Well, do good in school and be nice to your mom. Don't give her any hassles and I'll see you soon, okay? Your dad loves you. P.S. Sorry about all this. My mother let me keep the letters in a drawer in my room. First she would read them, and then I would read them, and then my brother would read them, and then he'd give them back to me, and I'd put them in the drawer. But once, it was after Smokey died, I showed my brother a letter, and he blew his nose in it, and crumpled it up, and dropped it on the floor. He didn't even read it. Nevermore, I said, and he laughed. And then I said, dick suck and he punched me in the head. The girl across the street and her father waved to each other every morning 
and he beeped his car horn. And when the, when the weather got nice, the girl would come outside and wave from the front porch. She'd wave until his car turned at the end of the street. I watched her while I ate my English muffin before school and practiced saying government functionary. But when I actually said it to her, I opened the front door and yelled at this one time. I, get, I got mixed up and said, your dad is a government dictionary. Then I slammed the door and opened it again and screamed, dick, suck. Your dad is a government dick suck, dick suctionary. I got in trouble and before school the next day, we had to go across the street so I could apologize. Sorry, I said to the girl and her parents. The girl was a grade younger than me and I wondered if she'd ever heard dick suck before. Dick suctionary, I thought. I'm sorry, my mother said. I'm not sure where he got such a filthy word. Go look it up in the dick suctionary. I had to squeeze my lips together not to laugh, and I looked at the girl's father, and he was squeezing his lips together too. When he saw me looking at him, he covered his mouth and coughed. Boys, you know, he said. My mother took me back to church, and this time she asked a lady about prison ministry, and the lady said, hang on, and came back with a brochure. My mother looked at it and said, oh, it's for when they get out. The lady nodded and said, do you know someone who could use it? And my mother said, maybe. Then it seemed like she tried to smile a little and almost couldn't, but it won't be for a while. Thank you.